God bless you. Welcome back. I bring you greetings from St. Home Church of God in Christ, where we're located at 833 East 21st Avenue, and that's in Gary, Indiana. I am First Lady Alexis Hammond, and I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and listening to the Word of God with us. Thank you. Hallelujah. Continue to follow us on our social media platforms. We want you to like them, share them, and subscribe. Tonight, tonight is our Bible study. Yes, hallelujah. And I got my cup. Amen. I got it out. Yes, I'm ready for it to be filled. The man of God, as he go forth, as the Lord lead him, Oh, as he unpacked this word of God, I'm just so excited. The man of God, my husband, Pastor Marcus Hammonds. Oh, as he go through the word of God. And this evening, our Bible study is entitled, God Handcuff Evil. Oh, we serve a mighty God. We serve a big God. There's nothing too small or too big for him to handle. God got us. God got us. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. On tonight, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, how you give us this opportunity, Lord, where we can spend and talk with your people, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, to open someone's heart on this evening, Lord. Let them be able to receive the word of God. These blessings we pray in your great name. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let us dive into the word of God. All right. God bless you. I want to welcome you back to our Saints Home Wednesday night online Bible session. We're so glad that you chose to join us once again. I want to thank my wife uh, for invoking the presence of the Lord through prayer on this evening. Amen. We have an exciting lesson and we need God's anointing to help guide us through this lesson, to teach this lesson on the night. All right. So I want you to get your Bibles out. Uh, go, let's go to 1 Peter, the second chapter. We're going to be looking at verses 13 and 14. Now, right before we get into the lesson, I do want to take the time and just a moment to invite you to come be a part of our live Sunday morning service. We have a wonderful time in the Lord. The praise team ministers. We have a wonderful praise team. They sing with the anointing of God. Amen. So come be a part and feel the warmth of God. We are a ministry that love people. We want to see souls won to the kingdom of God. Amen. That's our heart's desire. We want to see bodies healed. Thank God. To, even on today, I received a report. A mother, one of our church mothers that went into uh, surgery and she came out well. All is well. And we're thanking God. We're lifting and praising God saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. All right, let's get into this word of God. First Peter, the second chapter, verses 13 and 14. All right, in verse 13, are you ready? Great, great. It reads, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, look at verse 14, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And the word of God is blessed. All right. On this evening, I'd like to take for a thought on this evening. God 
handcuffs evil. Amen. God handcuffs evil. All right, we could shout right there and give God much glory right there. Amen. So it's interesting when I committed to this discourse, the jury in the George Floyd, Derek Chauvin case trial had just begun deliberation. Thus, my somewhat uh, legal approach to this lesson. Amen. All right. So we're thanking God that uh, everything turned out as well as it did thus far. Uh, the jury did reach a guilty, guilty, guilty verdict. And so we're thanking God for some justice. We're thanking God for some accountability. And so we have some reason to celebrate. But we must continue the fight. We must stay vigilant. We must stay prayerful. Amen. All right. And so here in the lesson, you'll notice as it ties into what's going on in the world today. Verse 13 stars will submit yourselves. Submit yourselves. We have to submit ourselves to the police. And when you look at what happened with Brother Floyd, one of the things that one of the mistakes that he made, which was no reason for him to lose his life, because we all make mistakes, but he made the mistake of resisting the police. OK, the Bible tells us to submit ourselves to authority. Amen. And so we got to be careful that we don't lump all policemen as bad policemen. They're, they're good policemen as well as there are bad policemen. It's just like in, in, the, uh, in ministry. There are good ministers as well as there are bad ministers. Amen. So we don't want to lump everybody in the same basket, if you will. And so we are to the Bible teaches us to submit to authority, submit to the police, submit to the governor, to submit to the kings. Amen? All right. Now, as we studied on last week, in last week's lesson, we talked about how we are just foreigners in this land. We're just sojourners. We're just pilgrims in this land. We're just passing through. Uh, we reside here, but our citizenship is in heaven. All right, but with all of that being said, that does not mean, uh, nor does that give us the right to be rebellious or disobedient to the good laws of the land. Mm. I'm talking about the good laws that do not conflict God's laws. And I say that because I, I want to take that. I want to take you to in the word of God to Acts the fifth chapter, the 28th and the 29th verse, because we look at the Bible in its totality. People sometimes just want to pick up one verse, or two verses, but we look at the word of God in its totality. So look at Acts the fifth chapter, uh, verses 28 and 29. And here Peter is having a conversation uh, with the rulers of the land. And they, they, they say to Peter here in verse 28, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in his name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Look at verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. So Peter made it clear and the apostles made it clear. We've got to obey God before anything. Amen. 
Amen. All right. So we are obedient to the law. That's not disobedience to God's law. Amen. According to the word of God. And so for here it is. Well, get this, get this. This is not, this is not hard. This is not hard. Nothing complicated about this. Good laws, the good laws of the land handcuffs evil. Amen. Yeah. The good laws of the land says you cannot walk into my property and just take out whatever you want. That's because of the good laws of the land. Amen. And so our Christian testimony today rests on our obedience to the good law of the land. Praise the Lord. We have to be our leaders. Amen. Examples. Yes, yes. The good law, the good laws of the land, like the word of God, are for our benefit. They are for our safety. They are for our protection. Amen. Amen. So you notice it says in verse 13 and 14, it said, therefore, submit yourselves. Submit your Selves. Christians do not have a problem respecting man's office. All right. Praise the Lord. Even if we don't respect the ungodly man. Mm hmm. Even when we disagree with their politics or their practices we yet respect their position amen ah, we as christians we are leaders amen and so as christians we must encourage and support laws that give respect to law abiding citizens as well as to God. All right. Now, let me close with two scriptures here. Look at Hebrews 13 and 17. Let's go to Hebrews 13 and 17. We love allowing the word of God to speak uh, for us. In Hebrews 13 and 17, you have it. All right. It reads, obey them that have the rule over you. This is the word of the Lord and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. And this is also talking about not just the naturally, but the spiritual leaders watch over your soul. There are some members who feel like they can jump over the pastor and get to heaven. Not according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to, let's go to, because that's getting into another lesson. All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. Here's Paul speaking. He says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Hmm. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And so even though there, be, there may be laws out there saying it's all right to do this or it's all right to do that, and you have the freedom to do that, it may not be lawful. It may not be expedient, excuse me, for you to do that. It may be per permissible, but it may not be expedient. Amen. So we have to be mindful. We want to be follow, uh, be good Christians, examples and leaders in the community. Example in which the world can follow. Amen. 
let's lead the way for righteousness. All right, stay right there as we're going to continue this discussion a little bit further. And we're going to dive into this word just a little bit more. All right, we're going to be right back. God bless you. All right, God bless you. We're ready to dive right back into the word of the Lord. We're talking this evening about God handcuffs evil. Amen. All right, let's dive right back into this word. We're in 1 Peter, second chapter. We're now in verse 15. Verse 15. Are you ready? Great. And it reads here, for so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. All right, may God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And the word of God is blessed. Hallelujah. My God, my God, I love that passage of scripture. Amen. Now, as we go a little further into the word of God, remember, we're talking about God. The text says God silences. God handcuffs evil. So that lets us know then God is not pleased when we are rebellious against the law of the land. God is not pleased when we are disobedient to the law of the land and surely against the law of God. He is not pleased. Amen. You will notice, look in your Bible, read your Bible. Notice in Matthews, the 17th chapter. Yeah. In Matthew, the 17th chapter, the 24th through the 27th verse, you would notice that even Jesus, our Lord and Savior, even Jesus paid taxes to the Roman government. I'm talking about Jesus, the King of kings. The Lord of Lord. I'm talking about Jesus who stretched the north out over the empty place and hung the earth upon nothing. I'm talking about Jesus who stepped out on nowhere, spoke to nothing and created something. Even Jesus was obedient to the law of the land without complaining and grumbling. <clears throat> so you got to remember, people, people are something else. You've got to remember, people will often disbelieve what you say. But they have a hard time arguing against what you do. They always want to disbelieve what you say. I, I get that all the time. But they have a hard time arguing against what you do. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 16, let your light so shine before men that others may see your good works. Ooh, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen? And as the text says, this is the will of God. Remember, God silences evil. God handcuffs evil. Keep your hand in God's hand. Let's continue to do the will of God. Let's continue to let our light shine. 
All right, stay right there. I'm going to jump right into verse 16. Stay right there. God bless you. All right, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's get back into this lesson. We're looking at uh, 1 Peter 2 and 16. All right, you, you yet have your Bibles out? Great, 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 great. Let's get into it. Verse Peter 2 and 16, and it reads, As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And the word of God is blessed and the word of God is so powerful. Oh, Lord Jesus, let your anointing fall fresh on us right now, Lord Jesus. We're talking about today how God handcuffs evil. Amen. Now, look, seeing God has handcuffed evil. That simply means now that we are free. We're free. To God be the glory. As a child of God, I'm no longer under the bondage of sin. But here it is. Although I am free from the bondage of sin, that simply means I am now a slave to righteousness. Meaning, simply this. I was not made free to continue doing wrong, but I was made free to do right. Meaning, I was not made free to follow after the flesh, but to follow after the spirit. Meaning simply that I was not made free to neglect the word of God, but to understand and to commit to God's word. All right? I was not made free simply to avoid going to hell. No, I was made free that I might live eternally with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you understanding this? I was not made free just to continue outlining my plans and my goals. But I was made free to do the will of God. Oh, my Lord, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Now, you, you find this in Galatians 5 and one will it will it tell us to stand fast in the liberty of our god amen all right now remember nothing will please this is very important nothing will please the enemy more than for us to once again become addicted y'all ain't hearing me to our old habits. Nothing will please the enemy more than for us to once again become addicted to our old relationships, to our old activities. Oh, can we talk? To our old faults. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Remember, because God has handcuffed evil, 
we are free. So this is very important. Don't overreact to the enemy. Don't overreact to the movement of the enemy. All right, if I can make an, an analogy here, I praise God that I can, I pray to God that I can get this correct. I'm thinking about Brother George Floyd. When the police arrested him, they handcuffed him. So they didn't need to overreact to his movement. Why? Because he was already handcuffed. Yeah, he moved a little bit, but he was already They overreacted. See, the enemy is going to move in your life. He's going to try to cut up. He's going to, he's going to do some things. But don't overreact to the movement of the enemy in your life. Remember, he's already handcuffed. That police officer did not need to shoot Dante Wright. They already had all the information they needed. They know where he lived. They knew his name. They knew where to find him. They didn't need to shoot him. He was for all practical, all for all practical purpose. He was already handcuffed. I'm trying to tell you today, don't overreact to the movement of the enemy in your life. No. God has already handcuffed and you are free. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Walk with your head up high. Walk in the liberty of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. All right, stay right there. I want to take you to verse 17 as we conclude this lesson. Let's go a little higher. Let's go a little higher higher. To God be the glory. All right, God bless you. We're ready to conclude this lesson on this evening. Remember, come and join us live every uh, Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Hear a word from the Lord. Hear some anointed singing from our praise and worship team. Just come and feel the warmth of God. We are interested in seeing souls saved and bodies healed. We know that God is a healer and he is a redeemer. All right, let's conclude our lesson tonight. We're in 1 Peter, the second chapter, uh, verse 17. You have it? All right, great. Let's read it together. And it reads, honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Very simple, very straightforward. All right. Remember, we're talking tonight about God handcuffs evil. God handcuffs evil. All right. Now, it is God's desire that we love everybody, that we respect everybody. He wants us to respect the rich as well as the poor. Amen. He wants us to respect the educated as well as the uneducated. God wants us to respect everybody. He wants us to respect the black man as well as the white man. Amen. Remember, we won't be judged on their actions, we will be judged on our actions. Now, it's sometimes hard to res respect people who are falsely accusing you, misusing you, and abusing you, but the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, 
which strengthens me. So it's not by my might nor by my power, but God that gives me the spirit and the strength. It's his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. All right. It says we're to love the brotherhood. Amen. So we're to encourage, not discourage. Mm. That's what love would do. Love will defend the defenseless. This is why we love the brotherhood. Because love will feed the hungry. Love will clothe the needy. Yes. Love will free the bound. Love will give eyes to the blind. Hmm. Love, love, love will forget the unforgettable. That's love. That's love. Look at John 13. Look at the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter. That'll be verse 34 and 35. Yes, yes. 34 and 35. You have it? All right, it says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another. Look at verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Amen? We are to love. All right? Then it says in the text, we are to fear God. We are to fear God. <clears throat> Amen. Meaning we are to reverence God every day. So that means we are to pray, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. I reverence and I honor you. Jesus, when Jesus taught us to pray, he said, pray our father which art in heaven. Hallowed. Reverencing Jesus. Hallowed be thy name. Amen. We have to fear God, which means we need to recognize that he's omniscient, he's omnipotent, and he's omnipresent. Praise the Lord. So we're to love him above and beyond everything else. Look at, uh, let me take us two verses, but I'm going to take you to this one. Let's go to Psalm 145. And 19. Psalm 145 and 19. And it says, He will fulfill the desires of them that fear Him. Not just supply your needs, but He will fulfill the desires. It says, He also will hear their cry. And save them. Talking about those who fear him. Amen. Now, Peter says, he concludes by saying, honor the king. Honor the king. In other words, respect those who are in authority. That's very important. That's where we kind of where we start in the lesson. That's very important that we respect those who are authority. We are as Christians going to be judged by our ability to respect those who are in authority. Amen. You understand, they are servants of God on our behalf. So let's pray for our leaders. Let's pray for our governors. Let's pray for our mayors. Let's pray for the president of the United States. Let's pray for our church leaders, our pastors, our superintendents, our bishops. Amen. Let's pray for our leaders and let's respect authority. All right, to God be the glory. I pray that you've enjoyed this lesson. You become a more, you are becoming a more well-rounded Christian. 
and that you're going to be able to walk a stronger walk in Christ Jesus. All right, stay right there. First Lady is coming back with some closing remarks and a word of prayer over your soul. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you again. Well, Sunday. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday at 11 a.m. And then join us back again here Wednesday night uh, for our Wednesday night Bible session. God bless you. God bless you all. Oh, what a powerful word. My cup is filled. <laughs> What an awesome word, the man of God. Hallelujah. I truly, truly enjoy those powerful words talking about God handcuff evil. Hallelujah. Tonight, we're just excited. We thank you so much for all that you do for us. We thank you for your financial contributions. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you being a blessing, been a blessing to the ministry. Hallelujah. And we also, today as we pray, we have two special prayer requests that we want to continue to be praying for them. Our mother Humes, we're praying for our mother Humes on this evening. And then for my son, I'm praying for my son. He, he has a special, a special close animal of his that he's going through with. And we pray it's a little cat. It's a big cat, really. And his name is Bean. So we're going to be praying for Bean as well on this evening. Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. We know this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray in a special prayer, Lord Jesus, for all of our online visitors and worshipers, Lord Jesus. Continue to bless them, Lord Jesus. Bless our saints own family, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, and we ask in a special prayer for our mother hymns, Lord. Continue to touch our body, Lord. Heal the Lord in the name of Jesus. And we also pray for being, Lord. Continue to bless him and heal him, Lord Jesus. These blessings we pray in your great name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you.